Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on porch time today. Guys, the weather has just gotten unbelievably hot. August is really here. <laughs> this is one of those times that you just want to sit back and just wipe the sweat all day long because it has been hot. Uh, but, that's what we expect this time of the year. Wouldn't have expected no more. But, they're predicting a cool down coming around the 18th to the 20th something there. It's supposed to be a massive cool down coming across the United States. Now it may not make it to us, but most of the United States is going to be able to experience this. So, thumbs up to you guys who are going to get it. Um, but anyway guys, uh, today I want to talk about a syndrome. It's a very real syndrome. And it's kind of a comical one if you think, stop and think about it for a moment. But it's called the Frog in the Pot Syndrome. And I'm sure every one of you have heard that if you take a pot and put him in cold, a frog and put him in a pot of cold water and turn the heat up, you can gradually cook the frog and he doesn't even know he's being cooked. You know? So I want to use that analogy today to think about what we're facing. Now, with everything that's going on around us, we don't seem to be bothered by it a lot. I notice a lot of people have just complied so easily with everything that's going on around us. Uh, my daddy used to tell me <clears throat> when I was younger, we could be watching TV and he would say, Now, son... Ten years ago, they'd have never allowed that on TV right there. You know, he said, man, I, I, I don't know what this world is coming to. And, and then I remember those things. And as years went on and I become a young man and with a family, I would tell my wife, I'd say, now, boy, when I was a kid, they wouldn't have showed that stuff on TV. You know, there ain't no way. I mean, you think about people like Clark Gable had to ask permission and they had, there was a big rigmarole on TV to, to make the statement. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. You know, he had to really get a lot of uh, uh, a lot of intake from people and permission from different people just to be able to say that one line. Now you turn TV on, you watch a movie, and then you get hit with an F bomb and in the GD thing, and I mean, it's all kinds of uh, vulgar, you know, sexually explicit stuff and you know, nudity, and uh, you know, they don't even call it nudity anymore. I mean, it's uh, it's rated. Uh, they, they begin to rate things. I mean, you've got G and PG and MA and uh, X and double X and triple X. I mean, all these things, it's all rated today. So it's kind of the frog in the pot syndrome. Uh, if they spring it on you all at once, you just don't seem to, you, you bulk it. <clears throat> but if they gradually feed it into you little by little, then... It's not such a big deal to you. You go, well, it's not so bad, you know. And, and that's kind of what's happened with, with the, uh, uh, with the COVID thing. You know, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that they didn't just first come out and tell you you got to do this. No, they, well, it's it's in your best interest if you would do this. And then as things went on, and if they'd have told everybody up front, you got to stay home. You can't go nowhere. You ever in lockdown. People went berserk. You know, oh my God, it's martial law, and they went crazy. And they didn't do it. They did the frog in the pot syndrome. They gradually moved this stuff in on us, you know, and people blew my mind. People just complied. I have not complied. One and I have yet to wear a mask. Uh, we've been in places of business. I was in one the other day. They said, sir, you got to wear a mask. I said, if you make me put a mask on, I'm going to walk out of this building. I'm never coming back. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, the governor made it, said it was mandatory for people to wear masks in stores. I told him, I said, well, I'm not wearing one. I don't care what anybody says. I'm not doing it. And the guy goes, no, sir, you feel freely to, to walk around in here and do whatever you want to do. You know, uh, we have to wear them as employers and employees because the government uh, mandated it. But you as a shopper, sir, don't have to. If you feel like you don't need to want to wear one, you don't have to. But don't leave the store. And I was like, very well. And... We went to buy another piece of equipment for our homestead, and uh, when we did, I called ahead of time. I said, now, when I come to your county in Mississippi, 
and uh, what are your rules? And he says, well, we require that people wear a mask during this pandemic. And I told him, I said, well, then I'll find somewhere else to do business because I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not coming in, not doing it. He goes, oh, no, 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 sir. He said, you, you can come in if you want to. He said, you know, you just social distance and uh, no, don't, don't not come, you know. And so Walmart, Dollar General, all these places said it's mandatory to wear a mask, but so many people has bulked it, and I am so happy for that. They have bulked it, and they, they've got now where if you come up to the door, uh, they, they just let you walk right on in. They don't say nothing. You know, they don't do anything because it's too much trouble on them to try to deal with people who are fussing and throwing a fit. And, and I, I totally agree, you know. But that's where we're at. They, they've done the, the frog in the pot syndrome. And, um, and, and it's the same way with our food today. Uh, Wanda and I was sitting down talking about how that everything now is already began to be rationed. And, they've, and, and guys, this is the funny thing about it. They've done it in a way that you don't feel like you're being rationed. It started out with Walmart's like, oh, we got the drive through Now you can order online, drive through and pick up what you want. You don't even have to get out and come in the store. You can just pick up your groceries. And people's like, oh my God, that's the most wonderful thing in the world, you know. And, uh, and, and people begin to do it. I, I tried it a few times um, just to see what it was like. I uh, had trouble every time. I'm going to say this. I had trouble every time I've done it. They tell me, well, we don't have this or we didn't have that, you know. Uh, well, if I was in the store and you didn't have that, I was thinking to myself, I, I would have supplemented it was probably this or that. But see, they don't know that. So you have to basically take what they give you, which is a conditioning. That's called conditioning. That you can't get what you want. So you're conditioned to, to say, okay, I can I can do without. You know, I, I'll make it. And then <clears throat> a lot of people like us, for instance, we started buying online. Because I, I have been to Walmart one time in five and a half months. I, I, that's a... Hey, I think that's great. You know, I, I'm not going back if I don't have to. I mean, I'm literally, I'm not. And so one time in five and a half months, so Wanda and I have began to order online. We order a lot of stuff online. Now, we've ordered from Walmart two or three times online, and every time something gets here, the way they packaged it, it was damaged, and we would just have to send it back, you know. And, but what they're doing is they're conditioning people to not go out in the public. You can order online. Keeps down congestion. It's part of Agenda 21. They're getting you ready uh, to not be out in the streets, in the towns, and stuff like that. You just order what you need. We will bring it to you. And Which, to Wanda and I, it's a big time money saver for us to do that. So we don't mind it. But we don't order stuff that we don't think... I mean, we go online, it says... You can get one of this, or you can get two of that, or four of this. Guys, that is conditioning people for rationing in the future. Now, just call it what you want. It's the frog in the pot syndrome. I mean, little by little, they're just gradually taking things away. You go in the grocery store. One and I went into a food giant the other day, only the second maybe the second time or third time I've been in a grocery store since uh, February. And I went in and I walked around and told Wanda, I even took some pictures. Uh, I told Wanda, I said, look, all those shelves are empty right there. I said, look at those shelves. They look like they're full. I said, remember when we came in here back last year and they had like 10 different uh, company names of this different product here? Uh, you could take your, you had a choice. I said, there's like three now. And they have them all up front, and the back of the shelves in behind them is all empty. I said, they make it look like there's a lot in there, but there's not. And I said, your selection has gone down. This variety's not there anymore. This variety's not there anymore. I told her, I said, wow, we're being conditioned to not have a lot of choices. They're, they're gradually taking the choices away, and, and, and they're narrowing it down to maybe three or four items of different choices. And... They're conditioning people to get ready for rationing in the future. Now, those of you who are patrons of ours uh, will see the video I put up on Patreon uh, about 
the futuristic events and how it ties in with the Bible and stuff like that. Um, about the future of America, about the future of about about Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, uh, COVID-19, and I tie it all together, show how it all works as a plan. And you know, what if you watch that video, you will either love me or you'll hate me. I don't really care which one you choose. It uh, I would hope that you would at least give it some thought, uh, because I've been working on this kind of stuff since the early mid 1980s let me say the mid 1980s um, and it took a long time to put this kind of stuff together and I, and I think it's pretty educational and I don't ask that you believe me I ask that you do your own research but take the thought training that I give you and look for yourself and come up with your own conclusion is, is, is my goal my, and my goal is to get people to think because we are in the frog in the pot syndrome right now and people are beginning to comply so easily to everything that's going on. Well, it's best for us. You know, we, we might better do this. Uh, COVID-19 is so contagious. You know, I mean, and I may get it. I don't know. Uh, but it's so contagious. We have to social distance ourselves. We've got to make sure we wear the mask and all that. But yet they're sending all these kids back to school. These kids are not social distancing. I mean, I've watched videos of kids going into school. I've watched kids going into school. And they're just arm in arm, bowl, like sardines in a can, you know. They're all on school buses. You can't social distance on a school bus. There's three kids on every seat. The seats are closer together than that. And, you know, the thing that gets me is all these things that we have to comply with, like freaking seat belts. You know, you got to put a seat belt on. you got to lock yourself in. You got a kid, you got to put him in a car seat until they get to be a certain age. But guess what? You can put a kid on a school bus and he don't have to have a seatbelt. It's perfectly okay. But you get caught on the highway with that kid without a seatbelt on, they're going to give you a ticket and you may go to jail. But you can put him on a bus, bless God, and you can send him off to a government school, or they call them public school, but they're government school because they're brainwashing them. And you can send him off to a government school and he ain't got to have a seatbelt on. It's a two, everything is two-sided. And, and we sit back and we talk about, well, you know, it's not, it's, it's the Democrats, it's, or it's the Republicans that's doing this. Let me tell you something. Agenda 21 was first issued in South America. Uh, when it was, well, from, let me back up, in the United Nations. Uh, it was first, uh, uh, old George Bush, the, old, the, the first senior, actually signed on it that he agreed with it in, um, in, in South America. And he's a Republican. The very next term Clinton was in, Clinton actually did an executive order. We talk about this on Patreon. Clinton did an executive order actually signing the United States up saying we will comply with Agenda 21. Uh, the Congress never got to vote on this. Nothing like that ever happened. Uh, Clinton done an executive order. We already have said Yes, we will do Agenda 21, what the United Nations says. And guys, it's the frog in the pot syndrome. They are gradually turning the heat up, little by little, little by little. And now that they're, they've they got to thin the population down, because, uh, let me say this. Part of the reason for doing some of the population thinning is this. The Army cannot do warfare in the mega cities anymore. They don't know how, and they've admitted it. Uh, the generals that, that speak on behalf of the Army says, our men are not prepared for mega cities. Now, the United States only has, I think, two or three mega cities, and what happens is these cities get so big and they get so large that, uh, that these cells can hide out in these cities and the military is not equipped to go into these cities and find these people because they're just not equipped, they're not trained for it. And as time goes on in the future, these mega cities are going to get to be more and more and more because of population growth and population growth. The cities are going to get larger and larger and when they do, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have a city that's so large it cannot be controlled by a police department, it can't be controlled by the FBI, it can't be controlled by the military. Because you have too many little warlords in there and, and going on around in it. And what happens is everything gets out of control. 
and the, there's no way the military or anybody can handle anything because it becomes its own environment in there. And that's one thing that our country is concerned about. Although it's not just our country, it's the whole world. There's mega cities all over the world and they're facing exactly the same thing. Every country is facing exactly the same thing. Now, what is the solution to this? The solution to this is to thin the population down. If we can thin the population down, then there's a chance that we can get a grip on this. Now, they've got some military maps out there. If you uh, if you can uh, if you can get to them, I've got them. Uh, that shows the average population, uh, average age of the people in America, probably about I think it was 2035, uh, 2025 to 2035. Somewhere in that area, the average age of the people in America is going to be between 35 and 45. Most everybody else will be, you know, most of them. Now, there'll still be some older people, but not very many, because most of them will have died off from something. Uh, the military has these type maps where you can look into population during that time. Uh, guys, there's agendas going on, trying to get us to that point, because in, in the world's mind, in the elite's mind, uh, anyone who is too old to get out and work or do anything like that, you're a liability. You know, you, you, you're on the system. Uh, they got to pay out money to you. Uh, you, get, you got medical. You got all these things that's got to be done to you. And basically now, you know, I mean, we're basically guinea pigs for them. That, that's basically the way it's happening right now. They're trying out new medicines and they're trying this and they're trying that on a lot of the old people. Uh, you know, they say we have COVID-19 when we're old. They put you in a hospital. Can't nobody go in there with you uh, unless you are the uh, the person who, you know, it has all their executive order. I mean, uh, their, you're their executor or something like that. You know, that's the only way you can get in. Uh, or if you're in your last moments of life or something, they'll let you come in to, uh, to be with the person in the last few moments of their life for just a short period of time. But then... You know, you've got different types of burials. You're only permitted to do certain kinds of burials and stuff like that. So, guys, we are being conditioned to be thinned down. It's the frog in the pot syndrome. We are gradually being cooked, and we don't even realize it. Uh, we... We're... I'm hoping... Let me put it this way. I'm hoping... That through the through all of this and people like me and, and uh, Ice Age Farmer Christian, dear friend of mine, uh, David Devine, dear friend of mine, uh, you know uh, Sasha Dobler, friend of mine from uh, from Abrupt Earth Changes, all these different people that I'm friends with, I'm I'm hoping that guys that everybody can listen to people like this and to us and can see what's happening. You know they may pull our channels. We don't know. We talk about it frequently, but it's possible that we can have our channels pulled in the very near future. Come. Come December of this year, all rules on Google changes. So that's going to be a big issue for us. You know, are we going to still be able to be on uh, here, or are we going to have to go somewhere else? We have to go into another platform. You know, what are we going to be able to do? Because it's kind of like right now, they're like, okay, we're going to demonetize you because you did this. You didn't stay politically correct. You said something you wasn't supposed to say. You know, bless. Slap you on the hand. Quit that. You know kind of thing, like you scold a child, you know, they demonetize you, they take your money away, quickest way to get to somebody, take your finances away from them, so YouTube said, we'll take your money away, and they don't pull your video down, and then if you don't comply, they come in and they pull your channel down, you know, and then you have to create a new one and, and start all over again, you have to follow all the rules and regulations, and that's what we're trying to avoid here at Deep South Homestead. That's why over on Patreon we put all of our controversial stuff over on Patreon because right now we, we have that platform. And yes, I do understand plat, uh, Patreon is in a big lawsuit. Uh, Patreon could go away tomorrow, you know. And if it does, then you know we'll have to go over to uh, we're over on event we're over on uh, Brighton. We're over there with some videos, you know. We we're trying to place a few videos in a few other places around just to. Just so we'll be there, and and guys, the bottom line is, it's just the frog in the pot syndrome. We're we're all being conditioned to work and to cope and to to do things in a specific order in a specific manner, and it's all got to be done politically correct. 
You know, and that's that's the irritating part of it. There is no freedom, okay? Let me just say this. There is no freedom at this moment. We say we're free, but we're not. I mean, Agenda 21, the whole, the whole thing behind Agenda 21 is equality for everybody and to take your inalienable rights away from you because you don't have... You shouldn't have the right to own because God said you have a right to own what you want. The United Nations has said you have a right to own if man says you have a right to own. It's not an inalienable right to you. You know, these are the things that we're having to deal with. You know, wickedness in high places right now. All of our rights are being taken from us gradually. And we seem to just keep sit back and we don't say anything. We just, you know, okay, you know, it must be best for us. And I'm not going to go deep, and deep into that. That's all over on Patreon if you want to see that. But guys, the bottom line is this. Let's pull our bootstraps up. Let's gird up our loins, as the Bible says. Let's put on the whole armor, like the Bible says. Let's get ready for warfare. Let's, because the battle that we're fighting today in this country is not physical. The battle that we're fighting in this country today is spiritual. And in order to fight a spiritual battle, you've got to first of all have the spirit. Okay? Um, the Bible says that nothing is really going to happen unless there first be a falling away of my people, the Lord said. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't belong to the Lord, you can't fall away. If you're not a child of the king, you can't fall away. He's not talking about the people in the world that's lost. He's talking about his people. He's talking about the people that's already born-again believers. Unless we have a falling away of the born-again believers, nothing can happen. But in the latter days and age, he says, there will be a falling away of my people. And guys, I'm sitting here today, I'm saying, you know what, we're already there. Oh. Uh, when they told the churches that they couldn't meet, what happened? Oh, boy, yeah, Lord, we can't. Well, we better not do this. You know, we might get COVID-19, you know. And look, a lot of these churches are big enough and don't have enough people in them that you can set people six feet apart in that church and people still have plenty of room because there's just not that many people there anymore. And, the, and then the whole thing was blamed on churches for spreading stuff. So guys... That's just the bottom line on everything right now, is the simple fact that we have got to come to the conclusion that we're being conditioned for whatever is coming in the future. And I talk about that on Patreon. I tell you all what's coming. And we're being conditioned for it. It's the, it's the frog in the pot syndrome. So today, I want you to stop and think about what I've said. I want you to give it some thought. I want you to uh, think about it because... I'm telling you the truth. I think if you go back and watch all my videos on Porch Time and all my videos on Deep South Homestead, you will find out that I have not told you anything that has not come to fruition yet. And guys, it's all been true. All the shortages, all the food things I told you about years ago, they've all come to fruition. And I'm not telling you that I'm a prophet because I'm not. I'm not telling you that I know everything because I don't. I learn every day from mistakes I make. Um, but I'm very observant about what goes on around me. And the Lord lays things on my heart and tells me to speak them. And that's what I'm doing today, guys. So I uh, pray that today has been a blessing to you. And I hope that it op opens your eyes. I hope that you're able to wake up and say, you know what? I might better start paying attention. So guys, with those things in mind, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you from Deep South Homestead.